Hello, Dr. Lewis here with Healthy Bible Partners discussing the chronic disease temperature algorithm and in particular biomarker number two, glucose. We're focusing on where, when glucose elevates in your bloodstream, does it start reflecting in early mortality risk. It also happens on the lower end, we can have insufficient glucose and that's included in this study as well. So let's get into the data. So first of all, glucose is a surrogate marker. The disease diabetes is really a disease of insulin resistance, and the best way to measure that is through fasting insulin. But glucose is a valuable marker as well. And by the way, as insulin resistance increases, as I showed in the biomarker one video, early mortality risk increases as well. So as insulin increases, it's increasing to control blood glucose within a tight, narrow range that physiologically isn't harmful. But when we leave that range, damage, inflammation, disease risk increases. So what happens next is when insulin levels tap out, your pancreas can only produce so much, then the glucose levels start increasing. Second, uh, secondary to that is triglycerides will increase. And finally, we'll see an increase in the classic A1C marker, which is simply blood glucose combining with red blood cells. And red blood cells hang around in circulation for about four months. So the A1C is actually an average value looking back at glucose over a four month period. So it's the reason why we want to focus on insulin is this chart explains it well. Here we're seeing large fluctuations in glucose over a two week time period. Very large fluctuations in glucose measurements, measurements. And here we're seeing much smaller fluctuations. Yet this person has the exact same A1C number. So on average, their glucose levels have been the same over the last four months. So why the fluctuation? Insulin levels must be considered because this person is probably much more insulin resistant, thus amplifying the effect of blood glucose because of the insulin levels. Now let's dive into glucose as a marker for early mortality. And really we're looking at inflammation. This is the right amount of glucose. You can see little glucose particles represented here by the white spheres. We have a lot more glucose. Why? Because the cells are saturated in glucose and so there's essentially no place to go except maybe to bacteria, viruses, cancer, and of course to fat. Fat is a storage for glucose. Glucose is food on the table, whereas fat is food in the freezer. So individuals with fasting glucose levels of 100 to 125, very common in America and Western civilization. So for each 18 milligrams per deciliter, increase in fasting glucose, there was a 30% increase in the risk for mortality. So clearly at 100, we're in a risk regime and our ideal range is 65 to 90, whereas the standard of care says 65 to 99. In this here, going from 90 to 99, uh, mortality will increase a little bit, but more importantly, diseases that are involved with lots of blood flow, like Alzheimer's in the brain, we'll see an uptick in those diseases. So, but in any case, we always need to consider our insulin levels. So here's a mortality chart, and this is really interesting, and it shows a lot about insulin resistance, not just glucose. So this is all-cause mortality, uh, relative risk, so the blue line and red line only compare it to themselves, not to each other. So here we have in the red line, known prevalent diabetes. And we see ideal for this group is a glucose level of around 100 to 125. Why? Because these people are insulin resistant and they need a higher pressure, if you will, a higher concentration of glucose to get adequate fuel into the cells. So these people will have more mortality than these people who are not known to have diabetes 
because the mortality reflects and, and goes along with the increase in glucose, but these folks will have less overall mortality. And the ideal curve for these people with no known diabetes looks to be around 70 to 95. Now we don't know if these people were perfectly insulin sensitive, so this is what it looks like for known diabetes. This would be the ideal range, 90 to 130, but mortality is still higher in this regime. Here's no known diabetes, and we probably have some pre-diabetics, so we're looking at around 72 to 105, something like that, but really ideal if you're insulin sensitive, this is the range you want to be in from 65 to 90. And what these curves really reflect is insulin sensitivity and insulin is the underlying disease. So here's from the New England Journal of Medicine from Harvard, really the top medical journal. So we see cancer deaths, huge amount of studies, and the range is around 65 to 100 or thereabouts as appears to be ideal, but we're seeing an uptick at around 90. That's thus our level. These are cancer deaths. Vascular deaths, similar curve, 60, 65 to 90 would be ideal. And then for non-cancer, non-vascular deaths, we see a little extension from the low end, 60, 65 to around 105. So really from an all-cause mortality perspective, 65 to 90 is the fasting glucose value you want to achieve. But more importantly, you want to be insulin sensitive and have a good insulin range from two to four. Then your glucose will fall into line fairly perfectly. So Dr. Tom Lewis here with Healthy Revival Partners. This is chronic disease temperature biomarker number two, fasting glucose and its relationship to early mortality. I hope you found this information interesting. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.